Hey guys, we're back. Mari and Ali here to continue our journey through compulsory series. So we are going to be doing fitness and yoga for everyone inspired by our equestrian vaulting fundamentals. So this week we're going to be focusing on the scissor exercise. So come on, let's get started. We'll start off with our warm up here. We're going to be just doing our marches to get our bodies warmed up today. So the scissors involves firing up your twist muscles, okay, so twisting, okay, our obliques, our arms, our back, handstand and arm balances, and of course, as always, our core, okay, so our core section. So basically, the whole body today, guys. <laughs> We're hitting the whole body, including those specific muscle groups as well. Okay, let's get into our butt kicks. So let's get that heart rate up. Butt kicks, try to kick your butt. Keeping that chest upright, kicking our butt. We're gonna kick our butts today, guys. This is a good one. We're gonna work our full body. This is gonna be fun because we're gonna be getting to do some a little bit of handstand work here too in our workout and yoga portions. All right. Now we're gonna do our world's greatest stretch, okay? So that hits the full body, hence the name, world's greatest stretch. So we're gonna come into our plank position here, okay? You're gonna bring up one leg to a low lunge. You're gonna come down with that forearm to the inside, twisting towards that chest, is twisting towards that front knee, okay? So we're gonna do just a couple on the same side, all right? Really coming down with that forearm down to the mat as far as you can. You're gonna really feel that in your hip, okay? Coming down, reaching up, okay, other side. Now bring that other knee up, the inside arm hits down, and then rotating up towards that front, that knee with that chest, okay? So really get down as far as you can with that forearm, down to the mat, opening up that hip, good. And last one here, awesome, okay? So now we're gonna go into our plank to down dogs, right? Seamlessly transitioning to that plank to down dog. You can always modify by putting those knees down at any time when we're doing plank work. Okay, you can always come down to that modified plank, to child's pose, no problem. Good. Give me three more here. Nice tight core, pushing back through those shoulders. Good, last one. Nice job. All right, guys, we're gonna, we have three blocks of two movements today. We're gonna be doing those two movements twice through in each block. I will move you through it, coach you through it, as always, providing you with modifications, okay? So let's get started. Our first movement today is our mountain climber to twist, all right? So we're going to bring one knee up into our chest, twisting that leg to the side, bringing that straight leg out, lifting up with that arm to the sky, then coming back to the center. We're gonna be alternating sides, okay? So just, Come with me guys, we got 30 seconds. Each movement, 10 seconds rest in between, okay? Then we're gonna be moving quickly through this, okay? So come with me wherever you are. Always modify down by coming down onto those knees, all right? Whenever we're doing plank work, remember, you can always modify back. Good, bring that knee in, twisting, lifting up, okay? Really try, twist as far as you can, Extending that leg. Good. Last one here. Reaching, extending up and down. Good job. All right. 10 seconds rest. Shake out those arms. We're going to be really getting into those upper body today, too. So really shake it out. All right. Let's hit those mountain push ups, guys. So extending up into that down dog position. We're going to be lowering that forehead down to the ground, pressing back up, okay? as low as you can, as low as you can down, hand up, okay? Try to get your forehead to tap, lightly tap that ground down and up, okay? That is the goal, to get as low as you can, good range of motion for that overhead press, right? So we're developing those muscles to be able to push us up overhead. I find this is one of the hardest areas to work so that, in that upper body. Good, those shoulders, firing up here. In three, 
Good. Two. And last one here. Nice job, guys. Woo! Shake it out. All right, we've got one more round of that. And throughout any of these exercises and these movements, take a drink of water, water break at any time as well, okay? All right, let's stay hydrated, guys. Let's push up into that plank, okay? Let's hit those mountain climber to extension. So we're extending both of our leg and our arm up to the sky, okay? Leg and arm up to the sky. So really grab that knee up and then extend it out. Arm and leg at the same time, guys. Come on. This is good for our coordination and our balance. As always, I like to challenge you guys through each exercise. Good. Come on. Maybe speed up. Speed up that pace this round. Good. And time. Good job. All right. Shake it out. Catch your breath. And let's get those mountain push-ups. All right, pushing up into that down dog position. Ready, let's hit it. Catch that breath again. Good job, nice and slow and controlled. Maintaining the proper form here, guys. Good, if you need to scale back, come down onto those knees, no problem. Good, all the way down and up. Breathing through. Good, guys, we're almost there. We've got 10 more seconds here. Push through the palms of your hands all the way up to your shoulders. Good, in five, four, three, two, and one. Whoo, shaking it out. Okay, we start off with a bang, guys. <laughs> all right, your arms should be nice and warmed up. We're, next movement we're gonna do in this block, it's gonna be our low squat here. So we're gonna be squatting down. Okay, we're going to be doing our low squat to tuck handstand, all right? So we're going to be playing with the handstand right now, okay? So you're going to walk out your arms from that low squat, reaching those heels to your bottom, and then coming back down, okay? Ready? Let's kick it. All right, so coming out, reaching those heels up, and then slowly coming back down, okay? So from our low squat, really play around to see how it feels to be upside down, okay? That center of gravity up over you guys, and then coming back down. Modified version, you don't have to tap up, tap up as high as you can, right? Just start off slow, start off just a little bit, maybe just lifting those feet up, right? Feeling how it feels to put weight on those palms and getting upside down, okay? Good. In five, four, three, two, and last one here. Good job, guys. Okay, next one is our reverse tabletop. We're gonna be coming into our first tabletop. We're gonna be doing our butt ups, okay? So from here, you're just gonna lift your bottom up, back down to the ground, okay? Come here with me. So depending on your shoulder flexibility here, right? That's as high as your butt is gonna go. If your shoulders are pretty flexible. You'll be able to get your butt up pretty high, right? So just go as high as you can. Sometimes you can put something underneath those hands for support. A little bit more. Good. Reaching all the way as high as you can. Okay, so this movement, the scissors exercise, is not only forwards, but we do backwards, right? So we gotta get those triceps and your shoulder mobility fired up, right? Good. And as always, like I say, the backside. We never forget, wanna forget our backside. Good. And last one here. Nice. All right. Okay, back to those little squats to tuck hands in. All right, shake it out, grab a drink of water. All right, so coming down into that low squat again. If your, if your Achilles might be a little tight here, you can always put something underneath your heels for this low squat as well if your heels aren't coming all the way down, okay? All right, guys, let's go. Let's tuck on up, nice and slow and controlled. Again, we're not slamming back down, right? So you really wanna try and control it, squeezing that core on the way down, okay? So nice and controlled, right? Good, okay, come on. Let's finish off strong. These handstands. Good, almost there. In five, four, 
three, two, and one. Good job. All right, coming down is that reverse tabletop, buttocks. Okay, hands behind you. I like to put my hands facing sideways, okay? You can do whatever is best for you, but I find that that helps with my wrist, like putting too much weight onto my wrist, too much pressure, okay? Good, lifting up with those hips as far as you can. Try to keep your head at a neutral position here. Okay, so put that in line with my spine when I push up my hips. Good. Making sure we're breathing. In five, four, three, two, and one. All right. Good job, guys. We've got one more block here of two movements, two times through. Let's hit it. Let's get it strong, okay? Side plank. Okay, so we're hitting our obliques, right? So to twist, I said we have to work a lot of our twist movements here. So that includes strengthening our obliques, okay? So we're gonna hit that side plank, all right? There's a number of different versions, variations you can do with side plank. You can always keep that knee down here as well. Also, you can come down onto your forearm if that's too much for your, for your wrist, all right? You can stack your feet out here or up on top of each other, all right? So let's reach up those hands. We're reaching through and then extending out with that arm right up above, all right? Let's go. Breathing through. Really try to reach your arm as far as you can. I know that's gonna be hard on your balance as well, okay? Like I said, if you feel like you're not stable here, you can always bring down that knee to that mat, okay? It's totally fine. Good. Reaching through, extending up. Keep that breath. Nice job. We've got 10 more seconds here. Good. In five, four, three, two, and one. Good, we're hitting the other side now. So come onto the other side, checking out that wrist. All right, pushing up into whatever plank version you'd like. And let's move together, come on. Move through, pushing up, and tightening up that core. And in order to do any handstand that's properly done, obviously you have to have a good, strong, solid core, right? Well, in any movement that we do, really. That's why I focus a lot on core exercises. So that's the foundation of where all our strength stems from, right? So we're finishing off with two plank movements here. Good. Hitting those obliques, come on. In five, four, three, two, and last one. Woo! All right, last movement here is your bicycle to toe touch, okay? So again, hitting that core, our obliques, our twisting motions here, okay? So we're gonna do two bike, straighten those legs, to toe touch, okay? Two bike, to toe touch. Okay, catch your last breath here, and let's hit it. Last movement. Good. This one also <laughs> challenges you on your coordination here, right? Bent knee to straight leg. Always modify back. You can keep your legs bent into those bicycles the whole time, okay? And again, speed, right? You can dial back that speed or go for it. Really fire it up. Come on, let's go. Finishing off strong here, guys. <sighs> Breathing through in 10 seconds. Almost there. In five, four, three, two, and one. Woo! All right, last and final round, okay? Last round. Okay, let's start off with those plank twists. All right, so coming up into that high plank, side high plank, and let's twist it out. Wherever you are, you come down onto that knee. Just don't stop moving. Good. Come on, guys. Let's finish strong here. You've gotten through to this point. Don't stop now. All right. 
in five, four, three, two, and other side. Okay. And each side might be a bit different, okay? So listen to your body. Really listen to your body, all right? Okay. And just twist and reach. Twist and reach. Really reaching that arm through and up. Good. Range of motion, nice job. Almost there. Last side on this side plank. Twisting through in three, two, and one. Okay, last and final movement, guys. We're almost there, bicycle to toe touches. You got this. Finish through with me. Ready, set, and let's hit it. Bicycle to toe touch, okay? Really try to twist each side, each repetition. Try to get the most out of that twisting on each side, hitting those obliques, that core. Good. Come on, if you're not feeling the pain, if you're not feeling that fatigue, we're not getting stronger. Come on, guys. You've got this, finish strong in 10 more seconds. Good. In five, four, three, two, one. Whew, okay. All right, Ellie, I hope you're feeling that too. We are all ready for the yoga stretch cool down. <laughs> I know I am. Get a drink of water as always to transition into Ali's portion. Whew, yes, feeling it. <laughs> awesome, Mari. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed that workout for the scissors. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into some of the yoga movements and exercises that you can do that are also going to help with those concepts for scissors. So we're going to start off actually in a crescent lunge. So Go ahead and bring that left leg out in front, step the right leg back. We're just gonna start by bringing the arms up overhead. So we're really starting to open up as you can see. I'll switch so you can see that opening happening in the front of that right leg. <laughs> and we've got Miss Kitty here joining us today. And so from here, you're gonna bring your right hand forward and your left hand to your lower back. So you're gently gonna start to look to the left. And if this feels okay, you can go ahead and extend that left hand back. And you're really opening through your chest here. I love this one because you're opening through the front of that hip and opening, expanding through the shoulders. Take one more full breath here. Good, and then we're gonna come to standing on that leg. Lift the right leg high and we're gonna twist the opposite direction. Now twisting to the right, feeling all that range of motion in the back. You can hook the opposite knee. Some of you may even wanna grab the opposite leg. This is a great one for that coordination, opening up through the back and the chest. Great. And then from here, staying on that same leg, <laughs> this yoga kitty. So once again, left knee in front, and then now we're gonna bring the hands to heart center, bring those hands in front of the chest, palms pressed, and then you're gonna hook the opposite elbow. Good, and this one's gonna really allow you to get a little deeper opening in that twist now that we're nice and warm. If it's too much on the back leg, you can drop that knee to the floor. You might even be able to get a better twist there. Now just remember that you're staying nice and flat through the back. We're very prone to injury when we're rounding and twisting, so you wanna make sure that you're staying nice and strong in that core, open through the chest, rolling back through that left shoulder as you twist. If you'd like to add on, you're expanding in both arms, and just so that you know the variations you can do on this, some of you may wanna take that top hand behind you and no need to push here, but after you've been doing this for several months, you may start to reach the opposite hand under and through to really get that leverage to twist. But there's no need to do that. And again, we don't want to cause injury. Just if you have that mobility already, we'll go ahead and come up through that crescent lunge. Good. And then exhale, come to standing. Go ahead and shake that off. 
Nice, and then we'll step that left leg back. So the right leg is in front this time, reaching up, and just start to find nice long breaths, long exhales here. It's so important to have the opening through the front of the hips. Um, when we're doing our scissors, uh, we need to be able to twist, but we also don't wanna be piking down. And for all the questions, and for everyone in general, just being nice and open through an area, if you tend to sit quite often, can cause injury. All right, so from here, just two more breaths. And you close your eyes. Good. All right, you're gonna take that left hand forward, reach the right hand back behind you, opening across the chest. So it should feel really good, especially after working in the arms, the core. Allow that right shoulder to plug down into the back. Expand your fingers wide and open through the chest. Great, okay, we're gonna come up. Left knee's bent, and now we're twisting to the left. You can also hook on that outer foot or just grab the outer knee, and we're twisting. So we're getting that full range of motion. If you need to use a wall for balance, you can. Really standing tall on that right leg. Open across the chest. Good, step it back. Once again, big inhale. This time exhale, bring the palms together. And then you can hinge forward and then you get that twist happening using your obliques strong to twist. And then that left elbow just settles down. And we're not slouching, we're not rounding. We're really open through the chest. Think of lengthening and then soften your jaw and breathe here. So think of lifting up and pulling that right hip crease back and the inner thigh inwards slightly. So we're not hanging out onto our hip. We're very much engaged through both sides of that right leg. Option to expand, spreading open. That should feel really good. <laughs> Just send that breath into the back. Again, if you wanna take that bind, you first drop the back hand let it settle, perhaps on the left hip, and then no need to force it, but you're reaching gently through, and that's a very intense twist, guys. I just know that some people have that mobility, you're gonna wanna try that. If you already feel good here, or even here, take two more breaths. Really find that length in the spine. Good. Slowly lifting out. Reaching long in that crescent lunge, and then come to standing. Go ahead and shake it off. Okay, so I wanted to um, do a little bit more shoulder opening. So just coming all the way onto your back here. And as we did with Mari, hands behind, but then this time, you're really just gonna start to walk those hands back. Option to take the legs long. Just start it off here. And if it feels good, you can roll the shoulders down. It might feel better to take the hands a little wider. You'd imagine you want about handles distance. So whatever your so single, whatever handles distance they are there for the backwards swing. And you're just slowly coming down. Good, nice and simple. Maybe walking them lower and lower. Good, and then from here, Take the hands clasped behind the back, open through the chest, and then hinging forward, lifting. And I like this one because instead of using as much gravity, you have to really lift to get that strength. So it's mobility, not just your flexibility. We're getting that opening, of course, in the hamstrings, but really finding that lift in the shoulders here. Good. Two more breaths. Lifting through the ring finger, pinky fingers away from the back. Lengthen out. Good. And then go ahead and lay down all the way. We're going to hug the right knee into the chest. You can roll out through that foot. And then take a twist. Nice and easy to start off here. Open across the chest. Find breath. You know, there's so many different things we can do, so many drills and skills, but some of these very fundamental twists 
are going to do a world of good if you just commit to doing them regularly. So you can repeat this video as many times as you'd like to till you really start to feel that opening, right? It takes that consistency and that commitment. You're not just going to get suddenly everything you want after one class. Great. Coming back, hug that knee into the chest. The yoga kitty agrees. <laughs> So hugging opposite knee, you can circle out through that foot a little bit, and then twist, get across. And she can be my little spotter. And you know, actually, if you do have a teammate or a coach, <laughs> maybe a kitty or a dog, then you can have them gently help you by gently, gently reminding that left shoulder to the ground, and just ever so slightly putting some pressure on that top hip and you do again want to be very mindful make sure that the person who's spotting you really knows what they're doing you don't want to cause injury by pushing too hard here great slowly coming back to center we're going to keep moving on that so from here what we're going to do next is take an eagle cross so that means cross the right knee over once and then twice now pop your your hips slightly about two or three inches to the right and then twist, knees falling to the left. And what that does with the pop is it aligns your spine so that if you were to have a bird's eye view, right, your spine is twisting, but it's still in alignment. And then from here, you can gaze off to the right. Good, enjoying that twist. And if it's too much to take those eagle legs, then just take the first twist that we did. And then if you feel this anywhere in a place that doesn't feel great, you can think about adjusting the knees to bring them closer to the chest or further away. And yet you can imagine that's gonna help to target a better spot in your back. Great. And then slowly release and we'll switch sides. Left knee comes over, hop both knees to the left and then twist to the right. So make sure you hop, sorry, the, the hips. You're going in the opposite direction as your twist so that when they fall, you're in alignment. Gazing away. And just relax here. <laughs> We'd love to know if do you guys practice with your dogs or your cats or are you out at the barn or your horse is wondering <laughs> what the heck you're doing? Let us know in the comments. Who are your furry workout buddies? Or are you guys doing this together as a team? Remember, you can get that gentle spot, just finding that twist. Twists are so good for so many reasons. Really good for your spinal health when done properly. Great, slowly coming back to neutral. Good, and we're just gonna finish here, guys. Nice and simple, hug the knees into the chest. And we're gonna take Shavasana on our bellies today. <laughs> so roll on over. Just to get that final opening through the front of the hips, you can even take a sphinx pose here to inhale, open through the chest, and then exhale, option to bring the palms stacked and the forehead resting, or one ear off to the side. You can cactus the arms, bring them by your side, pet your cat. <laughs> so just reclining on your belly today for a little change, taking a moment to let it all soak in, lots of openings through the back, lots of work through the core. Good. If you'd like to switch sides, let your ears on, taking three breaths there. Just picturing in your mind's eye, fresh blood flowing through all the muscle groups that we've worked today. One more really good breath. Good. and then you can start to wiggle through your fingers. We're just gonna stretch open with the chest one more time to open, 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 open across the chest in this way. We'll press it back for a moment into child's pose, forehead to the back. So we've done a lot of opening, a lot of twisting. You can take some time here to start to find that rounding sensation, lengthening the hips back. And then we'll come to a seated position here. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We hope that you're enjoying this series. Again, today we are working on scissor fundamentals. So scissors, if you're not a vaulter, is one of the compulsories. 
And these exercises can apply to everyone, really, because they're really going to target everything that you need to have in order to be a complete, well-rounded athlete. So let us know in the comments if you guys are liking these. <laughs> let us know in the comments who you're working out with. And we can't wait to continue and see you guys soon for our next video.